Hi, Todd here from Urban Sound Studio. Today we're going to take a look at strip silence in Pro Tools. Now just like any other tool, if you don't understand the fundamentals of how to use strip silence, you may not really understand the benefits of it. So we're going to start off by taking a look at how to use strip silence, how to maximize it within a workflow, and then how to make your mixes sound even more professional through the use of strip silence. So let's jump on in and get started with the basics. Listen to this shaker track. Let's tighten it up with strip silence. You could find it under the edit menu or hit command plus U. Let's bring all of our sliders down to the minimum and then select the region on which we want to work. Increase the strip threshold until the black lines locate the audio you want to isolate. Increasing the strip duration can help to tie smaller regions together during the analysis. Now hit extract. You will see that we remove the audio and are left with the quieter parts. This is typically not what you want to do, but it could be good if you need to analyze background noise or isolate vocal breaths for detailed editing down the road. Let's undo that and instead hit separate. This separates the audio into individual regions and can be helpful if you need to make quick clip gain adjustments to balance levels for consistency. Let's undo that and instead focus on the strip function. Now using command plus F, we can bring up our batch fades window and add a small 15 millisecond fade to the beginning and end of each region to avoid any pops. That sounds great. Let's try this again, but on a tambourine track. You can hear there's some rattle before and after each hit. Let's clean it up by isolating the hit. Increasing the clip start and end pad will add a little buffer to each hit so we don't lose the character of the instrument. Let's add fades to the regions. When you are done, you could use Shift Option 3 to consolidate all the regions into one single cleaned up region with all the fades incorporated. Now let's listen to some snaps that were recorded with too much reverb. We will adjust the clip end pad to shorten the reverb but keep the character. I noticed one snap is too soft, so let's use clip gain to even out the dynamics. Now let's add fades. The fades sound abrupt and don't work, so let's lengthen the fade out to 500 milliseconds to preserve the decay. That is perfect. Now let's see how to clean up drum bleed without the use of a gate. Here's the kick. And now the snare. Here's the kick. Let's isolate only the kick hits. Great, let's adjust the end pad. And let's manually delete any snare sounds that weren't removed. Now let's do the same with our snare. The kick settings happen to work perfectly on the snare. Add batch fades to all of the regions. 
We now have a gated kick and snare sound that will mix perfectly with our overheads and room mics. Or it'll help us visually isolate any hits that need to be replaced with samples later on. And to keep yourself organized, you can consolidate all of this kick and snare regions into one unified region per track. Here's one last tip. Use strip silence to affect multiple tracks so you can visually see when the parts enter. In this example, we are using a tom fill across three different tracks. It is as simple as selecting all the regions you want to affect, and it'll process them all with the same strip silence parameters. Thanks for watching. Do you strip silence in your workflow or do you have any other tips about how to use it? If so, please leave some comments in the chat below. And as always, please help support the channel by liking this video and hitting subscribe.